Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire once again, folks. Now, once again, like previous episodes out here, I'm beginning on an old railway line. You should be used to this by now. It seems to be a thing in the East Riding at the moment, doesn't it? Well, here, this station, which I'm standing at, seems to have had staggered platforms. You can see one platform here, but no platform on the other side of the road. That's because the other platform is over this road here because there's the old station building. You'll find this one in the parish of Hatfield. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. For the second time on the channel, we come to a parish named Hatfield. Last time was in Doncaster, a massive place that contained several settlements. This one also contains several, but they're an awful lot smaller. They are Great Hatfield, which is the biggest, Little Hatfield, and Gox Hill. Until 1935, all three were their own separate civil parishes until they were merged to form what we have today. This one has landmarks scattered all over the place. For a start, there's two railway stations, neither of which have names that relate to anywhere within the boundaries. There's also only one church, and that can be found at Gox Hill, although you'd be forgiven for thinking that you were in Italy when you see it. It was the traditional burial place for the Constable family of Wassant Hall. Great Hatfield itself has a village cross, an old school, a former pub, and not just one, but two former primitive Methodist chapels. All of these things have their own little tales to tell. And if that's not enough, towering over everything, literally, is Mappleton Water Tower, built in 1927 to supply water to Hornsey. Technically speaking, though, it's not in Hatfield, but you can't actually see it from Mappleton. So, less chatter and more walking. We've got lots to cover in this one, and a lot of travelling to do in the process. Welcome to Hatfield, the spread out parish near the sea that's ideal for a little holiday. Let's go! Have a guess which railway line this is. Yep, once again, we're on the former Hull and Hornsey Railway at another former station. This is Sigglesthorne Station, not Hatfield, which, like the others on the line, was in operation between 1864 and 1964. Originally, this was named Hatfield, and it was changed to avoid confusion with Hatfield Station in Hertfordshire. There's no point dwelling too much on this station because it's so similar to the others we've already seen. Let's move on. We're on Station Road, which leads east towards Great Hatfield Village. On the edge of the village, you'll find the Rygarth Inn. This was once the hub of Great Hatfield life. The pub incorporated the village shop and held a cinema night once a month. It also provided essentials to a nearby campsite. No more though, because it's now closed, although its owners still live here. Just after the pub, the road forks, 
Great Hatfield's main village street is away to the right, with that local campsite on the corner. Now my route around Great Hatfield is very simple really, down Main Street and then back along another road which runs parallel to bring us back to this junction right here and the pub which we've just seen is there so nice easy circular route. Our first landmark is an old chapel. Side by side here are two former primitive Methodist chapels, the older dating from 1862 and the newer from 1901. They're now two holiday cottages, each fitted up for four people. It's not a bad village to spend a week or so away in, right? In fact, Great Hatfield is the sort of village that's close enough to the sea to be perfect for a little holiday. I'd certainly spend a lot of time here. Next up is the green, which is where we find the parish notice board. Hatfield is done, which means we're down to 50 in the East Riding. Also here is the phone box, and a quick look inside revealed that this one is a book exchange. It's always good to see these. Behind them both is Great Hatfield's War Memorial. Only one local man was killed in World War I, and he's remembered on this obelisk. Moving on, this building is the old post office, the dead giveaway being the Victorian post box, which is set into its wall. There's no post office here now, and since the closure of the pub, Great Hatfield has had no other kind of village shop either. Now I reckon between here and where we need to take a left turn in a moment, it's all houses, it's all residential. But where we do need to take that left turn, there's a cross which you may have seen in the drive-in. Shall we go and find it? I think we should. I was almost right with my assertion that it's all housing, but one of them is a former school. I found very little about this one. Sketchy sources possibly date it as far back as 1820. Children these days attend school in either Sigglesthorne or Hornsey. Now it is 100% residential as we make our way along the remainder of Main Street. There's no more amenities, just beautiful houses. At the end of the road you're met with a small green which proudly displays the carved shaft and base of a medieval cross. Known as the Great Hatfield Cross, this has been referred to in the past as an ancient stone cross of exquisite workmanship. Look at these intricate carvings. On the northern face of the shaft, there's a carved human figure, albeit poorly preserved. It's lost its head too, but it's still almost three meters tall. It gives its name to Cross Street, which runs north towards our next area. Although in truth, that next area is not a lot more than a few isolated properties scattered along the street towards a crossroads. On that crossroads is a large pond. I don't think this is a mere, rather I reckon it belongs to the property that you can see behind. So you probably heard in the background of one of those shots you've just seen, uh, I, I was on the phone. I had, to, I had to turn my volume right, right down so as it not to uh, affect the recording of this video. Worst time ever to get a blooming phone call because obviously I was just about to turn onto this road here. You'll recognise where I am now. I've basically walked back down the other road, back to this junction. To be honest, I didn't miss anything because on this road, all you've got is basically a farm and that's it. So really, um, it, I suppose it was a good time to get a phone call. We're almost all the way around uh, Great Hatfield now. So from here, it's just a case of walking back past the pub and across to the old railway station. But of course, the parish of Hatfield doesn't just have Great Hatfield in it. Oh no, it's got a few other things as well. We've got Little Hatfield, which is where I'm about to go now. I'll drive through that because it's a very small hamlet. There's also another small hamlet, or maybe even a village, which is called Gox Hill, which I last mentioned in the Gox Hill episode of North Lincolnshire, because the two should not be confused with each other. And then to finish, I need to go and see a local landmark, which is right on the parish boundary. Got all that? I hope so. Let's go.
So this is Little Hatfield, the hamlet you'll pass through if you travel out of Great Hatfield to the west. There's very little here in all honesty and it's always been tiny. In 1717, Little Hatfield Hamlet consisted of just six houses standing beside the road from Sigglesthorne to Great Hatfield, but later there were only two or three, save for one isolated farmhouse. It's always been a farming settlement too, and that's no surprise given it's surrounded by vast quantities of fabulous agricultural land. You're just as likely to meet a tractor out here as you are another car. With not a lot of recorded history to speak of, Little Hatfield just happily minds its own business on a narrow, twisty lane that leads to Sigglestorm. Let's go somewhere else then, with another big landmark. That would be Gox Hill, and the landmark is St Giles's Church. So now we've moved away from Little Hatfield and you find me in Gox Hill, which is equally as small, but this has got perhaps one of the prettiest churches I've seen so far in the East Riding of Yorkshire. It's right behind the camera. Let's go and have a look at it. St Giles's Church in Goxhill is the only Anglican church within Hatfield's parish boundaries, and isn't it pretty? It's built of a mix of cobble and brick with a lovely west tower under a pyramidal roof which gives it a distinct Italian aura. This one was open too, so inside we shall go. If you wish to do the same, take note of this sign. The floor is a bit uneven. It's a delightful Georgian church which stands in an isolated position with only a farm and a house or two for close company. St Giles was the traditional burial place of the Constables, the family who we spoke about when we covered Wasson Hall in Seaton. There are no electric lights in here. The interior is lit only by oil lamps or by these wonderful clear windows during the day. I particularly like this chancel arch which reads, Thou art the King of Glory, Christ the Everlasting Son of the Father. It's got a lot to look at and admire, but the most interesting historic feature of this one is to be found in its tiny chancel. So believe it or not, this is the first church today that I've actually managed to get into and it's the one that's the furthest out of the way from anywhere. So in the floor here in the chancel, we've got another tomb here. I can't for the life of me read what the markings say because they're very it's very worn away and if it is English which I assume it is it's uh, not very easy to understand but even so very old tomb right there so let's wander back through the the nave and uh, back out of the church. We've only got one more thing to see here in the parish of Hatfield, and that is a local landmark, a very tall local landmark, which is right on the parish boundary here in Hatfield. It's a water tower. Let's go and find that to finish. This water tower sits right on the boundary between Hatfield and Mappleton. In fact, it's just on the Mappleton side. That's why it's called Mappleton Water Tower. It was built in 1927 to supply water to Hornsey Urban District Council from Hull. Until that time, Hornsey's water had come from private wells, pumps and a pumping station built on the Attic Road in 1878. However, this tower wasn't needed for long. It was made largely redundant by a new direct main supply from Hull in 1963. Whether or not it's in use now is debatable, but it's still an iconic local landmark. Next door is the gorgeous Tower House. Fun fact, this tower is almost identical to one at Rimswell, which was built in 1916 to supply water to Withensea. Just before we move on, here's another railway station. Between Goxhill and the water tower, there's a lane where you'll find Wasson Station, which served Goxhill until 1953. That's the last of the railway for now. Next week, we're off to the seaside. Get your sunglasses on and I'll see you on the beach, folks.
thanks for watching this video, folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already. It really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.